Today, we're gonna to talk about a topic that is so important right now, how families and educators can work together to address the social and emotional challenges kids are facing and dealing with. I'm here with neuropsychologist Jerome Schultz, who's gonna be answering questions about the stresses that kids are facing. Hi, Jerry, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Gail, great to be here, as usual. I'm gonna jump right into one of the questions. Can you explain a little bit about the stresses that kids are facing right now, specifically kids who learn and think differently? Right. It's really an important question. There's so much variation in the way kids are responding. We have to first acknowledge that some kids are not impervious to stress, but handle it better than others, just like adults live school or in-person school, or whether they're in virtual school, whether their families are uh, comfortable, whether their families are uh, low-stress families or high-stress families, whether or not they're having to deal with technology, whether or not they're having to deal with environmental issues that are affecting kids. There are just so many factors that affect how kids are dealing with the added layers of stress that are upon all of us right now. Uh, if kids are at home learning virtually or through a hybrid model, one of the things they may worry about is going public in front of other people on a, on a screen, worrying about whether or not that material is being recorded, whether or not other people will see it. Frankly, there's, there's no place to hide when you're on, in front of a camera unless you leave the room. So we may see some resistance from kids who are being asked to sit in front of a camera and really be public with uh, their strengthen with their flaws. That's really where the problem comes in. If they're in in-person school sitting next to other kids, uh, they're especially now in the beginning of the year, they may be adjusting to the fact that there are different kids in their classrooms. They have new teachers. Uh, the physical arrangement is different than it has been in the past. Uh, the rules and regulations that apply to kids in live school today uh, are, are add to the burden of kids, especially those who have organizational challenges and, and learning challenges. It's just more to think about. Jerry, what are some of the signs that kids are struggling emotionally? What should teachers uh, and families be on the lookout for? Well, a lot of kids don't say what's on their minds. So one of the things that's uh, that I always say first to parents and teachers, don't wait for your kid to tell you something because that may be the last kind of information they send you. But do look for changes in behavior. If a child has been calm and relaxed, if that's his or her basic behavior, when a child starts to look nervous, to do nervous things, to bite nails or to fidget more or or to get embarrassed more easily or even to start eye blinking a lot, uh, picking at his skin, those are kinds of things that are f some of the behavioral characteristics of worry and anxiety. Uh, avoidance is another one too. Kids who might have in the past approached the task, even with some reticence, may now be running away from it. It may be time for school, live or virtual, and they're running off trying to escape the uh, inevitable stress that comes from having to learn, uh, uh, especially for kids with learning challenges. So the behaviors that you want to look for are atypical behaviors for that child and atypical behaviors for other kids in the environment, in the classroom. If a child is exhibiting behaviors that are different from most other kids in that age group, maybe that's a time to raise the flag of uh, of concern. It's also difficult too in school because especially if a child has a new teacher at the beginning of the year, that teacher doesn't know that child's baseline behavior. What about kids who are going through sort of bigger life changes because of what's going on or who are even affected by what they hear about COVID, illness, death if they've experienced it, and even social unrest and other things going on in the news? How might kids who learn and think differently express that kind of grief, emotional difficulty over loss? Right. Well, the, the reality and the thing that makes it more diffi very difficult is that they may not be able to express it. And again, what you need to look for uh, are the behaviors that kids exhibit. Uh, kids are experiencing a lot of factors, as you pointed out, that might increase their stress, but a lot depends on how protected they are from the onslaught of information 
uh, that that continues to bombard them like it bombards us adults uh, and how well they're shielded from that. If they're hooked into technology and they're getting messages on their cell phone or their, or their uh, computers uh, about the news in the world, that means uh, the message keeps coming. It's very difficult. It's like someone who continues to punch you in the face and you're trying to ex ex escape from them. So one of the things that parents and teachers have an opportunity and I think an obligation to do is keep kids as shielded as they can or uh, from some of this uh, continuous bad news, or at least build in some kind of filters so that you limit kids' exposure to it. The definition of bad stress is the kind of stress that one has when you feel like you have no control over a situation. And when that happens, behaviors start to change. Uh, kids get resistant. Uh, kids get uh, sometimes oppositional. They say no more often. They hunker down. They resist uh, an adult's attempts to get them to uh, do some task, whether it's a task at home or in school. Uh, so mental health problems should be regarded as more serious when they result in a change in behavior that makes the child less productive, less engaged, uh, um, less able to learn. Parents and teachers have to work together to judge whether or not the emotional stresses uh, are at the level of severity where they merit some kind of intervention. Where can families find help? And what if financial issues um, are an issue in terms of trying to get outside help for your child? The good news is that when kids return to school, whether it's live school or virtual school, uh, they not only return to their teachers, but they also return to the services of the mental health specialists in the school, people like social workers or guidance counselors uh, or adjustment counselors who are trained and experienced and hopefully available to work with kids with mild to moderate emotional stressors, especially at this time uh, when the outside environment is causing so much stress. For kids who struggle socially, what are some of the extra challenges they face this year? Well, one of them is that they have been out of practice. So many kids have been so isolated for so long. They may forget what um, appropriate social behaviors are. Some kids have had the luxury of being at home and away from other kids because that means they don't have the demands to respond to an ever-changing environment like the one you find in the classroom. So they may be pretty relaxed about this. They come back to an environment where they have to interact with kids more. Those kids with social challenges are getting uh, bombarded with lots and lots of demands about being able to react and respond in appropriate ways. So uh, it's, it's difficult. There's a lot of personal decoding that's going on. If you're working alone in front of a camera with a teacher or working at home with your parent, you don't have to adjust your response style so much. But if you're working in a class where it's, uh, there, there are 14 squares on the screen or 14 kids six feet away from you, and you're having to deal with stimuli that are coming in from other people that you have to react to, or in the case of a child who's distractible, not react to. A teacher could say to a child in a, in a live school situation to put on a headset to listen to something, just to, again, put, let that child go into a kind of a, uh, an, isle, an island of uh, that doesn't require interaction with other kids for a while until they get used to the environment. For kids um, who are struggling emotionally but don't really open up about their feelings, how can families and educators sort of get kids to talk about their feelings and emotions? It's a good question, uh, and I think it is important for people to talk about their feelings and emotions. I met a teacher not too long ago who said she used a technique which, which I think is very helpful. Uh, when kids came in the room, she had a jar inside the door and she had yellow slips of paper and blue slips of paper. And she said to the kids, if you have worries, 
in that you're bringing into this classroom and you and you're not sure how to talk about them or how to express them we can be helpful but put your worries on a piece of paper drop them in the jar the yellow worries means you've got the worry but you're able to deal with it and leaving it at the jar means maybe you leave it at the doorstep if i see a blue slip in there with your name on it that means you've got a problem that's getting in your way that's keeping you up at night that's making it hard for you to wake up in the morning and it's making it hard for you to be in school if i see a blue slip in there i'm going to find a time during the day when we can talk uh, if it's a big big problem and it can't wait for later fill out the slip come up to my desk or find me and put it in my hand that means teacher i'm in deep trouble i need to i need help right now with this and you have varying degrees of kids who can respond to those kind of uh, systems but to give kids an opportunity to talk about things doesn't mean that they will so you have to be creative about giving kids a chance. You could have kids draw pictures. Kids, before we start our English lesson today, I just want you to make a sketch of something that happened yesterday that made you happy or something that happened yesterday or that you heard on the news that made you upset. Let's get that out. Let's get that down. And you can do this in the privacy of your own desk. And we won't share these with anybody, but I would like to look at them because I want to know what's going on, not only in your head in terms of learning, but I want to know what's going on in your emotional center. Uh, so we have to be we have to be sensitive to that. How can families and teachers work together to address social and emotional challenges this year? Well, I think it's important for both uh, for teachers to understand what's going on at home, especially in light of the crises that are going on around us. Conversely, it's important for parents to understand uh, how the child's performing or behaving at school. So communication between teacher and parent is more important than it's been, I think, ever than it's ever been. And uh, whether that's by email or phone call or uh, by notes back and forth, uh, whatever it takes, because um, sometimes kids hold it together during the school day and then fall apart at home, or sometimes the opposite happens. Kids walk into school if they're going back to live school and they're filled with anxieties and worries. So communication between the home and the school is really important. Remember that uh, anxiety and stress are fueled by uncertainty and the more we're not in control of things more the more likely it is that we're going to be anxious when we're dealing with kids with learning challenges they may not be in command of the curriculum as often as other kids so we have to make sure that they have the opportunity to get engaged in tasks in which they feel comfortable competent and in control. And that may mean not making the work easier, but backing up to a place where a child uh, had success and could feel that feeling of success because stress has a hard time living where success reigns. Jerry, thank you so much for being with us today and for answering these super important questions. Gail, I'm always glad to talk to you and have a chance to talk to the understood audience about things that I'm passionate about and I care a lot about. And it's my hope that parents and kids and teachers have a safe and successful return to school and a normal life if we can get it back in whatever way that happens. Thanks for having me on. Thanks again. And thanks to everyone for watching. We'd love to hear from you. So uh, let us know how you're handling social emotional challenges at home and at school. For more expert information and advice, follow us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again.